Okay, I've got the camera back in handhold position now. It's been probably about 15 minutes, a quarter of an hour thereabouts, since the previous recording. But you can see how this is coming along quite nicely. So, this is looking a bit blank, but very soon we'll have the loco numbers on both cab sides and on the front and rear of the locomotive. Imagine pacing one of these locos back in the day. They're a monster. However, with that, the tensions are now going to turn to this. Now if I pick this up, and models, and hold this HS scale, New South Wales Government Rail Standard Brass Locomotive Capside Numerals. And these are etched brass. Very, um, look at that. Uh, very expensive to my side of things, but this is not at the going rate. So I've already used some numbers before. So, um, unless I don't remember exactly, but yeah, so in any case, these are etched brass. I could use these on the locomotive. And if we just Tip these ones out for the moment. Get them out. See, it's probably about five thousand sheet brass. Oops. Let's have a look at C as to how they'd look up here on the loco. This camera position. Roughly, even though they'd be all right, they're about one scale foot top to bottom, or bottom to top, by the way, and really should be about nine scale inches, or between six and nine scale inches tall. So, what I'm going to achieve at the moment. Come back down here. I might put these to one side for the moment and them out of view. Turn my attention to these. Here's the water slide decals, and I've already scale measured them with my scale rule. And I reckon up here I'll get the right size. Now the best part about this, the camera's not going to pick it up, there we go, got small white ones that'll also do the job. Yes, I've used numbers on it out of here as well, and up here, but that looks to be my best choice. And we've also got this. This is a sheet by Broad Gauge Models. And you've got everything on here that you'd possibly want. So if you're wanting to do just about any lettering and numbering, just about any size, you know there is that option available. This comes with the yellow buff lining as well. So for the in scale modelling, I've actually made use of some of these numbers. So these other letters. The camera's having a pain in the bum of the time. I've used some here for HO scale numbers as well. So I've got the fives available to me on this sheet. I've got the sevens available. And I've got a couple of ones. So that I might put to one side as well because at the moment I need two fives, two sevens and four ones 
Well, if we look here, I've got the four ones. I've got the two fives and two sevens. So I can do 57 and 11 for the, both cab sides. So, I think I shall use this sheet. You can see how I do it. Be with me, oh, I'll put this camera back on the tripod. Okay, in front of me, if I move this out the way a minute, that's a remainder of a tile. Just to show you, ceramic tile. The sort of thing you find in someone's kitchen, like ours, or um, somebody's bathroom perhaps, or, you know, these are basically wall tiles. So, you can hear it. So, ceramic tiles, if you haven't got a piece of old glass that you can use, that's the next best. Now I've got these out of the, the packaging, you might be able to see a bit clearer and without some of the light reflection too much. And if I can get my trusty scalpel out. I might have just put a bit of sharpness onto that. Right. Yeah, it's not necessarily sharp enough to cut me, but it's still sharp enough for this. The other alternative, a carton cutter. Actually, I might even use a carton cutter. Better for me. Now, I've got a Got to know that when I'm cutting these out, I know what I'm looking for. So I'm going to grab a couple of sevens. One for the left, one for the right. If I can see what I'm doing, it makes life a whole lot easier. Sometimes it's hard to work when you've got the light glare coming back off the item you muck around with. So I'm going to try to do this as best as I can. A bit close to the seven on that one. We'll be close to the six too. Oh, just a tad close. Bit of, bit of time and patience again, folks. Oh, I had to get. Uh, That's why I need to make sure I've got clean fingers and clean tools so I don't want to mess up what I'm trying to achieve. That's one of the sevens out. Let go. Thank you. I've got two sevens laying face down. Right. That's a start. Let me just double check. I am getting the right numbers out. Remember, they're all the same size. 
Mines. Okay, let's pop in this. That's not there, the one footers. Ah! Never mind. So what I'm after is a nine inch jobs, which perhaps should be taking off the top two rows, not, not those other rows. Well, they can stay there for next project. Never mind. Shit happens and you step in it. All you do is wipe it off and keep walking. Boy, too much of this. So I've got these pair out. I'm doing the number ones at the moment. Ah, oh, here they are. The Eleven. Cut down your boredom time, folks. What I'll do in a moment. Let's get this one out. I'll leave the sevens to one side. I want to cut out the rest of these numbers. I'll come back to you in just a moment. Okay, folks. In here, there's a little square of paper. There's a number five. Trust me. It's not easy to see, but I'm about to soak it in here. It's ordinary water in here, but by rights it should actually be a touch of uh, detergent, liquid detergent, for washing up. Applying decals can be easy, because these sets that I've got here have been ran for a number of years. I've already had a bit of a practice run, see what these are like. And because they're a number of years old, it's a case of um, they tend to want to break up on me. I generally just put it in the um, water, the water detergent mix for a few moments. And this backing paper is still rather dry. Wet on the back of course, but you'll soon find out. So you just keep it soaking for a bit. Until such time, the dog next door barks. <laughs> but yeah, um, you soak it for long enough. I'll dip my finger and thumb in just to see. And it doesn't want to slide just yet. So it's back in underwater again for a bit longer. I apologise it might not be easy for you guys and, and everyone at home <coughs> watching this bit of video but if, if you get into doing decals or if you've never done it before certainly it's worth the effort of um, sitting next to somebody who's doing it watching and learning what they do but if, you, if you're trying to do self-taught I hope I'm going to be able to not only entertain you but to help hopefully give you some help along the way. Uh, this decal still doesn't want to slide. By wetting my finger and thumb, generally stops the decal from sticking to my finger and thumb.
It's a bit of slide there, but not enough. Whoops. Oh well. The decal decided to slide off altogether. Didn't want to slide a moment ago, but now it is. There you go. Oh great, this one decided to break as well. <coughs> it's one of the things about using old decals. Even if you had them for several months, several years like mine. Come on, get off there. I tend to have a problem of sticking to the backing paper. And then there's a lot of swearing and cursing that goes on just because of the fact they decided they wouldn't do what they're supposed to do. Sometimes the broken effect can add to the weathering of a loco. Other times it can ruin the effect. Definitely really good concentration can go a long way. This can be the most daunting part of doing any model. Whether it's a model boat, model plane, model car or even with model trains. It should be a work of art and when art becomes fart it can be rather disturbing and very daunting and also very disheartening. Alright. I don't know if you can see that. You might be able to. Just going to get a part of the rag, dab some of the wa uh, water off there. You might be able to see the five. Show what it's going to look like. So we're going to show the, the side I've already done. Like maybe 57 and 11. You might be able to see all the brakes. This side was the worst side for decal breakage. But still, that's the start. And that's the end view. So, while I continue on with this, so if you're getting bored absolutely witless, shitless, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to do the rest of these and I'll come back to you in just a moment. Okay people, I'm going to finish this video now. <clears throat> do another video a bit later on. So now you can see 5711 with its decals on it. See the loco here from the front. And what I've also done in between the last break and this one, I now have the front buffer beam done as well. The next job I might end up doing, <coughs> I'm thinking of doing that is, will be the, the back of the tender, which currently still doesn't have its decals on, but certainly next job will be in the cab with the crew. But I'll sort that out later. You see the hole there between the two brass screws? There will be a piece of uh, tubing of some sort that will link through to the tender. So then that way people won't have to ask what that hole's about. <coughs> and as you can see quite clearly where the coal now looks. So, as you saw, real locomotive coal. Yeah, I'm going to just do a bit of a shot like this. 
if you were to say there's running around on a layout, would you think that's real? There's many different camera shots you can take. And I'm just hand holding the camera at the moment. It's rather cold out here in my workshop tonight. But certainly, even if you to actually I'll just drag this forward a bit. There we go. How does that look? Does it look fairly realistic for a pose? Who knows? <clears throat> so this will be the newest addition in my collection. I've just noticed something. So bear with me, I'm just going to change things again. And as you can see from above, trying to get the lighting down, but if, if that had all its freight cars behind it, hopefully that would look pretty darn realistic. See how the weathering comes up from the matte coat. I've done it rough on purpose. From here you might be able to get an idea of the cab detail. And even if it was a case of the locomotive steaming past, up close, no minute, I'll use me zoom on this camera. <clears throat> You'll be able to see all that working. See the steam engine, she comes steaming past the sound unit inside. And um, working headlight. And then the other thing that would really make this model the best working smoke unit. I think that's a white metal kit. I sort of don't want to risk putting a smoke unit into it unless there's a way I can do it without melting the white metal part of it. So there you go folks. <coughs> I hope you've enjoyed seeing this locomotive coming to this point of its build. I might just drag it backwards a bit. There we go. <coughs> and um, all I can say, happy modding folks and wish you all the best with whatever your projects are. Take care, stay safe, we'll catch you again next time.